Good morning. Great morning. Welcome to Morning Meditations with Metropolitan. Take a deep breath of thanksgiving. For God has granted us the dawning of a new day. We give thanks and we give praise. Matthew 25, 31. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. We know the rest of this scripture reference due to the witness of the Sarah Allen Missionary Society and our work as a member of the Washington Conference. We are reaching out to those in need during the coronavirus pandemic we thank all of you and the community for your donations to our food bank so that we can feed those who are hungry. We pray that you are being uplifted during this week of meditations from our missionary sisters. And I continue with Matthew. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked out for me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. We know this scripture is true because of the work of our presenter this morning, my missionary sister, Maria Wallace. She has been a Metropolitan member since November of 1997. Her ministries and outreach include the Kelly Lay Organization, the Sarah Allen Missionary Society, of course. She has served as a class leader, an ambassador, and a Delta of Metropolitan. Thank you for gracing us with your love and your loving kindness. Our missionary sister, Maria Wallace, the floor is yours. Thank you and good morning, Metropolitan family and friends. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? In the Psalms, Proverbs, and other books of the Bible, we find command to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Patient and confident trust and the Lord is the central idea of the exhortation to wait on the Lord. The entire Psalm 27 is a prayer to God for help. It beautifully illustrates the meaning of waiting on the Lord. David expresses authentic faith and courageous trust in God based on his confident expectation that the Lord will rescue and save him in the time of trouble. First. We see that we can wait on the Lord by trusting in him. David expressed great confidence in the Lord, who is his light, salvation, and stronghold. This kind of dynamic trust dispels fear and despair. We can wait on the Lord by seeking him. David conveyed his trust in the Lord by longing to be with him, to, to commune in God's presence and worship in his temple. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. God's dwelling place, regardless of the platform, praising and worshiping the Lord, David felt safe and secure. We can wait on the Lord through prayer, as did David, in eager expectation of deliverance. David asked God for wisdom, direction, and protection, wholly believing he would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Those who wait on the Lord can fully expect him to fulfill their hope. 
Waiting on the Lord involves the competent expectation of, of a positive result in which we place great faith. This expectation is based on the knowledge of trust in God. Those who do not know the Lord will not wait on him. Neither will those who fail to trust him. We must be confident of God, who God is, and what he's capable of doing. Those who wait on the Lord do not lose heart in their prayers. This is confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. Waiting on the Lord renews our strength. Waiting on the Lord by trusting, seeking, and praying establishes our faith and brings calmness and stability. I wait patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. What are you waiting on in this season of your life? Are you waiting on a call back from a job interview? Waiting on your employment, waiting on your unemployment or retirement pension to be verified? Are you waiting for test results or healing? Do you feel like your back is against the wall? Is life throwing the unexpected at you and or your family? If you answered yes to any one of those questions or you're currently facing a different situation that causes you to wonder if God has forsaken you, then stop. Don't throw the towel in just yet. Sometimes we might feel as though the Lord does not see or hear us, that he's not answering our prayers. During these moments, we should put our complete faith and trust in God. We should wait on the Lord in eager anticipation, knowing that he is with us and in control of our lives, not us ourselves. It is in waiting, humbly praying, admitting that you, God, and you alone know the matter of my fate, that my anxious and impatient heart can rest, trusting that you know what's best. And all I need to do now is patiently wait for the storms to pass. Amen. 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 Amen.